Okay, so just a line running straight down the middle of the page. Doesn't have to be centered at this point because we can always adjust it later on. Once I've created the selection, I'm going to right click, go to fill, and make sure that the contents are set to foreground color. Now, I've got black set as my foreground color right now, and whatever color you have in the active palette over here to the left will be the one that your selection gets filled with. So make sure that's black, and uh, then simply hit OK. And then you'll notice that a black line is created across your canvas from top to bottom. And what I'm going to do is just try to center this as accurately as possible. Again, it you should be, uh, as long as your eye can kind of, you know, is fairly accurate, you should be able to get it right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to click and drag this divider layer down to the bottom here, next to the trash can, onto the new layer button. And what that'll do is duplicate it. Then I'll simply hit Control T on my keyboard to go into transform mode. And then shift, hold down shift and begin rotating this line so that it's now horizontal, going from left to right on the canvas. Once I've done that, just like before, I can begin moving this into position. Like so. And uh, I'm actually going to... Let's actually divide this up into four. We may not use all of these panels, but I just want to get a nice kind of landscape canvas to work on for these. So again, I'm just going to copy that one more time. And uh, we may not do use all of them, but I would like you guys to do at least six of these today. So if, uh, for example, you were going to begin these at three o'clock, Till four, that would give you an hour. So how long would you need to spend on each one of these in order to ensure that you got them done within the hour? Ten minutes. About 10 minutes. Yeah, about 10 minutes. That's exactly it. So uh, make sure that you're keeping that in mind, guys. And in fact, that's actually probably a good number to work to uh, at this point. And uh, if you have extra time after that, then uh, by all means, I keep on articulating it. But that'll do for now. Once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer directly above my background layer. And uh, I'm just going to fill each one in with a slightly different hue of color. So I'm going to make a selection around each of these panels. And I'm going to pick maybe a kind of gray green for this one. What this will do is it will basically set a, it'll create a base color for our environment while simultaneously creating or kind of leaning toward a particular mood. Okay, so the thing about colors is that we're very good at, they're very good at moving us in, and we're very good at relating to them with different emotions. So for example, when you think about yellow, how does it make you feel, Anthony? How does it make you feel? Uh, warm. warm and happy maybe, joyful, right? Then you've got red. How does that make you guys feel? Melancholic. It's uh, a color of rage and passion, right? So uh, basically that's what these colors are going to help us to do. They're going to help us to set an overall tone for the mood of each of these panels. Now, they don't have to differ that much. I'm going to go for some yellows, um, but the main thing I want you guys to um, take away from this is to make sure that each of these panels are put onto a separate layer, so that as we're working on each one, we can make a selection around that panel and uh, basically ensure that we're not going outside of it as we work. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, I'll call this one panel 2, and I'll fill it. Well, it is a swamp, so... Um, now, be careful of the kind of colors you do pick. You do not want to make them too saturated. 
as I've stated before, such red colors are quite rare to come across in the real world. Okay, they're actually quite unnatural. So try to keep the colors at least at a mid tone or a mid saturation. Okay. Again, if you are going for very bright, very saturated colors, make sure that your environment um, is within that context, that you are creating a bright and colorful environment for your creature. So we'll call this one panel 3. And fill it. Make a darker version here. And again, this just gives us a nice base to work off of, okay? So instead of having a blank canvas there, we've, uh, again, we've kind of got that context to work within. So uh, it gives us a place to begin from, which is a heck of a lot better than just kind of sitting there looking at a blank canvas. It's got a bit of a red environment here. Go for something a bit more green now. Call this one panel five. Fill it. And uh, let's make a bit of a blue, a more bluish gray environment. Put that one as panel six. Now you can see that this document is actually going to get quite extensive in terms of the layering that we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do straight away next is I'm just going to begin kind of cleaning up my layers list over here by shift and clicking the top divider layer and clicking onto the bottom divider layer, right clicking and merging them together so that the frames are actually all on the one layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually crop the canvas here. Like so. Okay, so that we're only working with the six images here. And I'll go ahead and I'll just create an outside border. the sides. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, and I don't know if, if uh, this is the case for you, but maybe you're feeling a little bit different already about each one of these panels. I mean, you're not going to be relating to them all the same. And uh, all we've really done is placed in a different color for each of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically just demo one of them. And I'm going to show you the process as to how you would go about actually creating one of these thumbnail drafts for your environment. And then once I've done that, you will pick up your stylus and you will begin painting as well. Um, occasionally looking back up onto the projector as I continuously recap the process throughout the next six or four. Yep. Oh, just to frame it. Yeah, you don't have to do that, but it yeah. makes it look prettier for me. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing I want you guys to note is that I'm actually working from a distance. Okay, so <laughs> I'm actually looking at four different panels here. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> to ensure that I'm painting within these frames, I'll show you a quick little trick that you may not have come across just yet in Photoshop. What I can do is I can create a new layer, and again, I'll call this panel one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Alt key, ensuring that 
this panel 1 layer is above the filled in panel 1 layer and I'm going to actually hold down alt hover my cursor over the division line between them and simply click right and what you'll notice is that you get this little down arrow that occurs and what that basically means is that um, if I switch all of these off now as I draw onto my canvas here I can't actually go outside that layer so it literally masks off the area that you can paint in so that's what we're going to do for the other panels as well um, but that's a really cool way of going about it yeah I thought that was going to be like they're going to show some mixing the layers because Mark mentioned that like uh, mm. yesterday and because I was trying to figure out how to like offset multiple layers at once mm -hmm. without doing it manually and you mentioned connecting layers I don't know what that is yeah right so that's how you do it Troy Okay, so I'm going to take a look now at some of these swamp references that I sourced off of the internet before, just again to give me some ideas to work off of, some kind of food for my creative food for my brain to kind of consume and digest, right? And uh, hopefully you get some good output from that. Yes. So what I'm going to do, so hold down Alt and then hover over the division between the two okay cool so what I'm going to do now is I'm basically just going to begin picking new colors and laying them down onto my canvas here I'm going to use the same brush that I always use the uh, 19 brush although for environments you can use other brushes as well so uh, you can also uh, some brushes that are really good are the dry media brushes so we can go ahead and just append them add them to our collection here. And uh, they're pretty cool um, as a way of laying down a base palette. So let's go ahead and try some of these out. Set our opacity to about 70 here. The dry media brushes. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll just select a color from my canvas here and I'm going to go ahead now and figure out some more kind of colors that I could add on to this panel here uh, by basically just comparing the current color to the new color to kind of figure out and weigh out whether or not they're going to go together. Okay, and usually you can tell by your eye. Yeah, and sometimes you can have a palette already, you know. Um, but yeah, so. What I'm going to do is, again, looking at my references here, let's get rid of this one. I'm going to kind of figure out what I'm going to do for this. So, okay, awesome. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to begin by placing in some sky. All right, so I'm going to pick a color for that. Make it a gray sky. Something like this. Right. Yep, so you can use the dry media brushes as well. Doesn't matter too much. And, uh, dude, what's up? So, what I'll, I'll go through this again, just as a recap, because you might have missed it before. So, basically, as a default, I like to use these brushes up the top here. Okay, so you see the first 19 brush that we normally use. Except when it comes to environments, you can use these still, and we will use them for sure. But um, in this certain situation, you can also use the dry media brushes as well on top of that. So the way that you access these dry media brushes is you simply go up to this cog icon here in the brushes menu. And you go down to dry media brushes. And what you'll get is a little dialog box that pops up. Just make sure that you hit the append button. And it will basically append or add on those additional dry brushes to the current brushes you have in your library there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And uh, the one that I use specifically is, it doesn't really matter, so kind of explore, but I'm using, um, it's either the 63 or the 36. Okay. 
So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to begin kind of painting out some shapes here. And I'm thinking I'm going to kind of have some very kind of shallow mountains or mounds here. Nothing too crazy. And uh, basically I'm just kind of figuring out shapes. That's where my head's at right now, is uh, shapes. Um, I'm also going to create a kind of river that will lead the viewer's eye into the scene. And it's often good to have something like that, just something to kind of pull the viewer into the scene and begin exploring it. So uh, I'm going to have that in here. And we might create some little islands for uh, for these frogs. What do you reckon? Yeah, that'd be fun. And maybe it actually goes out into the... Sorry? Uh, yeah, because oftentimes water, the only reason water is blue, in case you guys don't know, is because oh, it's reflecting the sky. Yeah, so uh, it's actually just clear water um, and basically reflects whatever is... So for example, if the sky was uh, green, you know, anyone a fan of Dragon Ball Z here? <laughs> Right, planet Nemic, green sky, green water. Makes sense. So that's what I'm going for here. And um, then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just select this one, and again find a, ni a nice kind of complementary color for that, comparing it to the current and the new. And I'm just going to begin kind of placing in some terrain elements. Okay, so I might put some terrain out here. The other thing is, um, spectral grids, you could be used in this one. Or... I don't personally use them, but you can, definitely. It's completely up to you. Um, at this point, not for a thumbnail draft. Now again, I want to be making sure that I'm keeping an eye on the clock here, because this is just for shapes, yeah. all right, and mood, and getting that kind of thing down. So once I've done that, what I can do is I can simply color pick from some of the areas that are overlapping. I can begin putting some background mountains in. What I'm really looking for is some interesting shapes here that I might be able to use. So maybe on this planet, the rock formations kind of go up like mushrooms or something and kind of bulge at the top. Um, but maybe they're also shallow, so they're not very tall at all. all right? So I can experiment with that and you can see how fast it is. If I didn't like it, I could literally go in here, pick that, and just kind of readjust the shape as I need to. Right? Pretty awesome stuff. And uh, again, as I said, I don't really want these rock formations to be that tall, at least in this concept. Um, this is really just for kind of experimenting. So go back to my references here just to have a look. So you can see there's a lot of kind of shrubbery and, and trees and stuff around here. Um, little islands of grass and stuff. I mean, really, um, the water should be the main surface that I'm building off of here. So maybe these are like little banks or something. Yeah, yeah, all right, now I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> so for me, environments are... Um, I'm always talking about design, right? I'm like, don't call yourself an artist, call yourself a designer, right? But I've got to say, I do feel a little bit more arty when I'm doing up these environments. You know, just because it's, yeah, I mean, the heck, if I if wasn't a character designer, I'd probably have a lot more fun, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, you can really push this stuff if you want to. So you can have like little puddles of, of water as well. So uh, let's go ahead here. Again, I'm just going to go back in, make sure that I'm... Uh... Now, in terms of creating depth, what creates depth? What are a few nifty little tools that we can use to create depth in our painting? Line lengths and also that shading is a yep. bit Yeah, yeah, exactly. Things get... So we have darker values toward the front and lighter values toward the back. Okay, this is... The only reason this works in painting is because that's all we really know when we look out into the distance um, at a scene in real life. So I'm going to use darker tones for the foreground. Okay, so I'm just placing in some shapes again. Now again, I want these, I want there to be a kind of bulge at the top of these. So they kind of like go up like mushrooms or something. 
All right, so this one again as well. Now this dry media brush has very strong opaque quality to it, um, which is one of the reasons I'm using it because it's really good for getting strong shapes in there um, at the beginning. But when I go in to add more details, then I'll probably switch back to the uh, the default Adonis brush pack. Okay, and getting some of those in there. Sweet. So what, once I've done that, uh, what I can begin doing is actually going back to my default brush in here, my 19 brush, and I'm going to begin actually painting some of this stuff out. Um, and again, I don't, I don't really want to be necessarily getting caught up in details here. Nope, they're all still there. I'm just going to select that. And uh, again, to create details, to you know, increase the resolution, so to speak, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select darker tones. Okay, so that's going to allow me to literally paint into these shapes here. You guys see that? Now again, I'm going to blast up my opacity at this point. So I'm thinking like these rocks will kind of be laid on top of one another. Especially in these top parts. Now the one thing that we're missing from this uh, piece is of course the trees. So we're going to add those in later. So I'm getting some interesting rock formations. <coughs> and I want them to be smooth as well. Like I feel like you know, being in an environment like this, maybe the, the dampness and the water would have kind of eroded those rocks away to be quite smooth. Um, you know, I mean, I don't read National Geographic or anything as much as I probably should, but that's what I'm guessing would be uh, justifiable for this. As you can see, just a very simple setup in terms of the perspective. And what I'm doing is I'm just color picking from the palette as well as adding in those darker tones, right? So now I can go in and really begin articulating this. Now, I have to kind of hold myself back from getting too caught up in the details here. Um, but I, I like the way that, that this is going. And uh, later on, we can actually blow this up and continue on with it, just articulating it and stuff. There's a few things I want to add in here just to show you guys how it's going to work. So I think this mossy kind of material is pretty cool. Like maybe the, the grass kind of grows up onto these mountains here. All these rock kind of materials. See I'm blending them in a little bit here. And uh, of course, I'm going to go in and just add in some additional details to the underside of these rocks. And you can see I'm just scribbling them in, literally. Um, you can always re refer back to your reference material. You know, if you've got actual rocks there and stuff, um, definitely refer back to them in order to scribble <laughs> something in that looks somewhat believable. But yeah, now I'm going to think about my lighting direction very vaguely as well. So it might be coming from, say, this way. Yeah. Which means that, I mean, you know, in this overcast environment, you're not going to get much lighting direction happening. But, uh, yeah, again, just going over to my brightness, adjusting that, laying in some of these bigger shapes. Okay, cool. So, that's one part of it. Yeah, you can see how the color kind of determined the mood that we went for here. Now that's one part of it. Um, the next part, again, what we can use here is those overlays to add lighting to our, co our color to our lighting and color to our shadows. So if I go ahead now and I create a new layer on top of this one, again, holding down Walt on my keyboard to connect it together. Holding down Walt key. Alt, yes. Alt, maybe I said Walt. All right. So we'll call this panel one again. 
panel one shadow overlay. I'm going to set this to multiply and then what I'm going to do is pick a nice kind of blue tone. Now I usually always stick exclusively with cooler tones for my shadows and uh, warmer tones for my highlights. Now that's completely up to you guys. I mean, as you can see, there's not a lot of warm tones going on outside where the uh, lighting is concerned. So it's completely up to you. I like warmth and cool because they go really well together. So with my layer set to multiply, um, what I'm going to do is change back to the airbrush and I'm just going to begin basically painting in the shadows. Okay. So everything's darker now. In order to make it look like it's lit in the way that we want it to be lit, I'm going to change my eraser to the airbrush and I'm just going to erase the areas that I want to be lit, like so. And uh, now if we switch that on and off, you can see that we have a little bit of lighting going on. Now the sky is obviously going to be relatively lit. Yeah. The other thing I want you guys to notice is over here in my navigator panel, I have an even smaller zoomed out view of how that thumbnail is looking. That allows me to figure out whether or not it's reading correctly. Okay, I mean, working at this distance does the same thing, but this just <laughs> totally ensures that it is. Okay, that it's looking good from a distance. So what I can do now is go ahead and create a high load overlay, which I will also connect up to that base panel one layer. And I'll call this highlight overlay. Go back to my airbrush tool. And I'm going to choose maybe something that complements this blue color. So we'll go ahead and we'll go for a uh, somewhat red orange. And then I'm just going to tap very lightly, making sure that the layer mode is set to overlay. All right. And what that's going to do is create some really nice environmental lighting for me. As you can see, if I switch that on and off, you can see the difference there. It makes it look all magical and whatnot. Now, obviously, to create that sense of depth, as we get further back into the image, it's going to get lighter. So most of that light color will come in the background. Once I've done that, I'll create a final layer above all of these. So you can see the stack is building up quite high. And I'm going to call this Panel 1 Final Render. And again, this isn't supposed to be a finished image. So uh, what I'm going to quickly begin doing is creating some environmental fog now. Environmental fog helps to separate the different forms uh, within the image, um, basically pushing certain forms back and bringing certain forms forward. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that in there real quick by selecting my sky color, making sure I've got an airbrush selected, and I'm going to basically just dump some of this airbrush in. And it's going to kind of fade it out a little bit. And you'll see that as I do that in this little preview over here, it actually begins to give it more depth straight away. The other really cool thing about this is that now uh, I can literally start to bring out the trees and they're going to look like they're sitting in front. So we'll have some ones over here in the background that uh, I think you want to get your, uh, your that's all right. So there's going to be some trees, some dead trees up here. So I guess it, it kind of almost looks like maybe once upon a time this was all underwater, right? Make some trees over here. And again, the way that I know how to do these trees is simply by reference. Okay, so I know the trees are usually quite tall. And uh, look at the leaves. I mean, that's just awesome. That's so spooky. So uh, I can literally go ahead now and begin to create these really tall trees with branches. And the reason that you might look at them and uh, go, oh, that looks cool, is because I've simply referenced it. Okay, 
It's not because I'm a good designer. It's just that I stole from nature and I added it in there. Okay, so I want to kind of stack some of these trees on top of each other. So because opacity is basically automatically applied to this brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some in real lightly and then I'm going to place the front ones in real dark, right? So again, we can create that depth. Like so. Adding in some little branches running up the trunk here. What I'm doing is I'm just indicating some very <laughs> hinting at some leaves in the background ones. And uh, then I'm going to have some leaves dangling down here, just real quick. I think that's lichen. Oh yeah, lichen. Probably a combination of both by the looks of it. Okay. It's a very dead looking swamp here. Again, we can add some more trees in um, over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just select this one and I'm going to begin painting it in. And you can see because this is a darker tone version of the tree, it actually looks like it's sitting in front. Right, and now we're starting to create some real depth in this image. We can actually have the roots kind of running over and stuff. We'll create some moss in a moment. But again, I don't really want to like get too crazy with this. Like, It's been really hard for me to hold back to be honest. Um, but for the next ones, we will stick to actually 10 minutes. I guess this is just a really great way to show you guys the process of how all of this is actually constructed. And uh, maybe we'll have some darker tones for the trees that are sitting in front. Again, those tones are really going to help us to separate certain objects and shapes. Okay, so if we go back to our main reference here, you can see those tree trunks kind of come down a bit. So yeah, don't don't uh, make things hard on yourself by not referencing anything. It happens way too much. We, get, we usually get like two different students, right? The students that literally just trace and the students that don't reference anything at all. And it's like, no, it's in between. Like, it's okay to like, you know, reference things as long as you're not ripping someone else off. Um, but yeah, referencing will definitely give you more interesting ideas at Maybe the end of the day. It's like literally close the image and referencing it. Trace it or? No, don't trace it. <laughs> Draw it from your eye. From Tracing's not going to do anything. And don't do it from memory because your brain doesn't store details. It stores generalized symbolic versions of those references. Aren't we supposed to be generalizing this? <laughs> You're probably not understanding quite where I'm going oh, yeah. with that, Troy. If you can draw an immaculate tree from memory, fully detailed, better than I can from using reference, then uh, you can win that argument. I'll let you have that one. Alright, so again, we got some trees here. That's why I can often tell like straight away if a student's used any reference or not, um, because often their designs will actually come out quite I mean, not bad at all, just that there hasn't been, they could be expended upon so much more and articulated in a much clearer way. So I'm looking at this stuff here. Okay, we've got these kind of like hairs of moss flowing down from the tree. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, you'll also notice that a lot of the time you get these like swamp plants around the base there. We can add some of those in too. Just onto these rocks here. It's a good base for the trees to be sitting on as well. And uh, as you can see, I mean, it all really comes together in the end, you know, into an environment that, you know, gives you a certain feeling. So, um, let's go ahead and add some of these. So this is actually a nice green color that we could use for these plant areas. So we can add those in. Sorry. Um, I haven't really put in any strong highlights since this is an overcast version. And uh, yeah, like you can add in highlights, obviously. Like, uh, for example, if I wanted to highlight some of this area up the top here, I could simply increase the brightness a bit and uh, just begin painting that in. Just with highlights, yeah. Okay. Again, maybe add some highlights in here. Alright, so this one took way too long, but uh, it's still quite simple, so um, it's not a fully fledged one just yet. But um, this gives us a really nice kind of, you know, idea as to what, what's happening. So um, the other thing that we could add in here as well is uh, some really reflective areas on the uh, river. Because again, water reflects things quite it's very good at doing that. Just put some reflective areas on the swamp here. This one? This one here? Yeah. Um, I'm just using the Adonis brush pack now. Uh, sorry, the default one that I normally use, the 19 brush. I use that for a lot of things, uh, funnily enough, actually. But um, again, like for example, so we've got a silhouette here. If I was to add highlights to that, I'd simply pick from here as an example and I'd begin just throwing them in there like so. And uh, yeah, darken these areas up. Again, you can see that the tones here that I'm using for this object are a lot different to the tones I'm using for this object up here. can really take those down to a lower level. Okay, again, um, you'll notice that we got this fog stuff. If you want to separate one form and bring it forward uh, from the background, what you can do is simply stroke over it like this, right? And then begin painting back in those darker tones, right? That's even more forward than it was before. Okay. Does that kind of help? Who's finding this awesome and fun? So it'll be your go. Your guys goes next to. Uh, One thing I wouldn't mind covering is how you got the uh, background color to uh, sky color. Sky color. Um, again, the way that I decided to compose these colors was to simply go into my color palette here, pick from the main color that I'd already laid down, and simply using this current color over here as a reference, I begin moving around my color picker until I found a color that went nicely with this object, uh, this current color, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and then once you're happy with it, you just hit OK. That's how I picked the sky color for this one. All right. Now, as a final note, what you can do with this stuff just to really make it pop is you can add in some adjustment layers. All right. So, just like the rest of them, 
we can hold down Alt to link them to that specific layer. So if I go Image, Adjustments, um, Color Balance, what I can, whoops, sorry, Layer, New Adjustment Layer, um, Color Balance, and then if I hold down Alt and I connect it onto that base one, um, what I'll be able to do is kind of adjust these colors a little bit. Yeah, it colorizes it all. And again, that can be really great for enhancing mood. And then, of course, as a final one, one that I always add in there is curves. Curves is really great for um, just making those forms pop. So I can kind of darken it up and increase the highlights. Okay. And the process for actually taking this to the next level as you might have guessed, is by simply going in there and continually, you know, adding in highlights and just increasing the shadows and stuff, right? So that's a very basic kind of draft environment, yeah, and that's how you'd go about it. So what I'd like everyone to do now is I'm going to move on to the next one and uh, you guys can have a crack at actually creating one of these as well. Okay. Again, you know, maybe try not to spend more than 10 minutes on it. That's what I'm going to do for this. This next one, I'm going to have a look at my clock here. So it's about 3.20. So uh, by the time 3.30 hits, I'm going to try to have another one of these done. Okay. So let's basically go through the same process and re recap on the, uh, the method that we just went through. So again, panel 2, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm also going to name it panel 2. And this layer is basically going to be where I decide on all my color palettes and lay them down. So again, going over here, I'm going to select that base color that I've created in the beginning. I'm going to pick a nice color for the uh, sky. So we'll go for something like this, maybe a yellow color. And uh, then I'm just going to start painting with my chalk brush. That's the one in the dry media brushes pack. And we'll set it to maybe 70. And uh, for this one, I'm actually going to go for, um, let's place in the sky here. Just going to begin scribbling in some formations here. I'm going to select this base color again, and again, you know, these things have water in them, uh, which are covered pretty much by moss. So I'm going to go ahead now and using this color picker and comparing it to my current color that I have selected, select a new color, desaturate a blue color. Actually, let's go for green. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so I've got a nice green color happening. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm thinking maybe I'll put like a pool up here of water as well. So maybe it's like shelves of water, something like that. That could be a cool concept, interesting concept. So uh, what I'll do now is I'm just going to begin painting into some of these formations. And again, this tends to be comparable to looking up at the clouds and making out pictures with your eyes. You know, you kind of just laying colors down under the page, different forms, different shapes, and figuring out something interesting that kind of catches your eye. So again, two minutes in, I'm going to go ahead, begin picking some darker tones. And uh, for this one, I really want to create mounds that are um, 
quite steep and pointy, so stuff like this, but uh, rounded on top. So maybe they're kind of curved to an extent. So again. This one's going to kind of curve down here on into the water. Yeah. Okay, cool. And maybe I'll have like some kind of center point out here somewhere, right? Some kind of giant mountain that stretches up into the sky. And I'd like these to kind of have shelves as well, you know, like shelves of water. So I'm going to just pick, begin picking some darker tones here. And uh, switch back, of course, to my first 19 brush. And start selecting darker color tones. Now again, this has opacity automatically applied to it, which makes things very easy for me at this point to kind of, you know, control how intense these lines I'm creating get. And I can begin digging into these shapes, as you can see, by just painting over them. And I'm actually going to have like, you know, little rivers of water kind of running down this one. Have some rocks at the base of it. Okay, so I've only got about four minutes left. I'm going to have to start wrapping this up actually. So I'm going to go in there and then what I'm going to do is have another river coming down here. And uh, I'm going to place in some fog. Actually, I'm going to create a multiply overlay for the shadows. So I'm going to place that in there, change it to multiply. Maybe we can go for a warmer tone of shadow here and a bluer kind of tone for the highlights. So I'm going to gain with my airbrush, just begin placing that in there. I'm going to go back to my eraser tool, erase out the areas that I don't want to be in shadow. Create a new layer above that, call this highlights. Make sure that it's connected with that base panel. Change it to overlay. Go ahead now and choose a nice blue light color tone. And I'll begin just placing that in there. Get the opacity a bit, it's a little bit intense. And then I'll create another final layer for the final pass. And change back to my first Adon uh, Adonis brush pack brush, the first 19 brush. Add in some fog. Place in some trees.
like this one. Again, you can see that we're really creating some depth here. And these thumbnails, by the way, they're more for you than anyone else. Okay, they're just so that you can kind of allow yourself some place to explore uh, the direction you might want to go for some of these designs. Right? So again, I'm just going to go in here now and uh, select some of these, paint in some grassy areas. And uh, of course, we want to make sure that the water is reflecting the sky. So we're just going to put in some, some of that. OK, awesome. And then finally, one more minute to go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go in, make sure that I add in a layer, adjustment layer. Give it a color balance. Make this one more greeny, I think. Another adjustment layer, change the curves up. some of that down. Like so. Alright, and then once I've done that, I just jump onto the next one, right? And uh, of course you probably won't keep within that first 10 minute time frame to begin with. And you'll realize, damn, you know, I only got halfway through this painting in that 10 minutes, but then that'll kind of help you to figure out how long you should be spending on each element within the painting uh, as an individual artist. So uh, you kind of do need to, you know, set that time initial time frame, figure out how long it takes you to do things where you're falling short, and then obviously compensate for that later on. So now I know I need to kind of get that first initial stage out quite fast. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is, uh, and you can see by the way, how different these two feel. Yeah, this one's kind of green and murky. This one's kind of dry and dead, right? Pretty cool stuff. So what I'll do now is I'll jump straight onto the next one, right? And uh, I'll begin painting it out. So I made 331. So let's see if we can get done, this done by 341. I'm going to go ahead and select this. And uh, go back to my dry media brushes. Select this chalk brush. Take it back down to about 70. And I'm just going to begin painting in some of this stuff. I'm going a bit crazy with this one, I think. So select that and uh, let's go for something interesting. You realize like these colors don't always necessarily matter. Um, what matters more is the values that you give them primarily. So we'll go ahead and break this one up a little bit.
got some distant kind of curly mountains here too that are happening. Then I'm going to darken some of these up. And just to separate the, some of these forms. Yeah, so I'm going to cut across here. I'm going to cut across this one. And uh, this take, does take some time to get the hang of. Like, I remember actually uh, starting out with these environment designs. It was pretty tough to get the technique down. But uh, I think once it clicks for you, it becomes very fast. And uh, it becomes very fun as well, to be honest. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm just going to take my chalk brush down to a smaller size and begin literally like drawing some of this stuff in. So I'm not even going back to my first 19 brush anymore. I'm just kind of sketching some of these rock designs in. And now you can see just by playing around with the shapes that I've got some interesting designs going on now. Again, what I'm going to do next is place in some highlights in a moment. But uh, so my sky is actually quite kind of yellow. I'm going to change that up a bit by selecting it and uh, going ahead to find something a little bit more sky like. Yeah, these look like they go together well. I'm going to go in there and just quickly paint it in. Again, that base color really does set the tone for some of this stuff. Now, I like this one because it is kind of froggy. It has a froggy feel to it for some reason. Don't ask me why, I can't explain myself really at this point. Alright. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and again add in some highlights for this river here. And uh, I'm going to select this rock here, and I'm going to go ahead and add in some highlights. So I've got about four minutes left on this one. Again, you'll notice that I'm actually spending a lot of time taking note of that clock. Adding in some highlights for these forms up here in the top area. selecting color picking to uh, you know define the different forms and stuff so you'll see what I'm doing here with this mound is I'm actually creating some tops and bottoms there some layers and um, finally another really important thing that's gonna basically the fastest things that you want to do in this is create depth okay create depth and mood so one of the fastest ways of creating depth again is that environmental fog all right so we're gonna create a new layer in a moment um, for the shadows, so I'll add the shadows in now. Layer, new adjustment layer. Again, we're going to go. Sorry, what am I doing? Just need to create a new layer. <laughs> so uh, this will be the, for the shadows. So we'll name the shadows, and I'll pick a nice color for the shadows. Make it blue. Make sure it's set to multiply, and. Again, I'm just going to paint it right over the top. Yeah. Right over 
right over the top here. And then once I've done that, yep, I got the airbrush selected for that one. And uh, this just adds like a nice kind of bloomy effect, I find, when you're able to do it this way. So I'll make one for the highlights now, add that in there. Highlights go in, pick a nice color for the highlights. So this is going to be definitely more of a yellow tone for the highlights here. And then make sure it's set to overlay, go in with the airbrush and just really put those highlights in there, pump them up a bit. Cool thing about these layers is you can actually go into them, image adjustment and adjust the hue if uh, you, you want to experiment around with the different hues of color. All right, once we've done that, we can add in some fog. Um, uh, so again, the way that you want to select fog is just by selecting, say, this part of the sky area and uh, right over the top, some of these areas. All right now, the way that we make it look like there's depth is we just get darker tones now. Go back to our uh, main brush. In this case, it's a dry media brush. And uh, I'm just going to begin actually painting in some of these areas here. And uh, yeah, again, some going to make it really pop these highlights. All right. Again, got one more minute left. What I'm going to do next is I'm simply going to jump right over into my adjustment layers layer, new adjustment layer, go to color balance, hold down Alt to connect it. And uh, for this one, I think we'll go more red, more yellow. All right. And uh, finally, we'll go ahead and we'll add in some uh, curves. Oops, why did I make that one? Like so. Again, just take down the darks, increase the lights. And uh, we're left with another composition there. Now, I didn't actually put trees into this one, um, which I probably would have done in hindsight. But again, sticking to that 10 minute time frame, right? What you can, what this will happen, the more you do this, is you'll just get faster and faster. You become more productive with your time. And uh, yeah, so I would say try to stick to that time limit. And if you run out of time, just jump onto the next one straight away, right? It's going to teach your brain to work faster, get this stuff out. And the, the thing is, is they're supposed to be this messy. All right. They're not supposed to be pretty. They're not supposed to be anything that's polished or articulated to that great of a degree. They're just there to, again, serve as ideas that you can throw out there really fast and uh, basically take to the next level later on. Okay. So that's about... Four, I reckon we got time for another one. So we'll do one more and uh, then I'll get you guys to uh, pack up. But is there any questions so far? Yeah, so what's the first step, guys? Someone call it out. Someone who doesn't really contribute a lot. <laughs> How about you, Anthony, at the back there? What's the first step? Come on, you know this. What's the first step? So we've set up the frames, right? We've got our panels ready to go. Well, you just have to lay down one base color, right? Okay, awesome. Once we've done that, what's next, Damien? Um, yeah, and uh, what brush do we use for that? Or is handy to use? The weird cloudy one. Yeah. 
You mean the chalk brush? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Is it the one you're talking about? It doesn't look a lot like a cloud, but yeah. And uh, guys, what are we focusing on? Nice. That one. That is the one. And what are we focusing on in these preliminary draft designs, primarily? Yep. The larger shapes. Beautiful. Yes. 100%. Composition. Contrast. Mood. Feeling. Yes. That's really what it all comes down to. And uh, I want you guys to remember the execution because, again, like a lot of these tools, you know, when I say, you know, fog is going to help you incorporate depth into your image, uh, darker values toward the front, lighter values toward the back. These are all tools that are going to help you to create an environment that looks realistic, that looks 3D. Like you, the viewer could just jump right in there and begin exploring. Okay. So practice, practice, practice and make sure that you've got those references there on hand to help make your ideas more interesting and also to solidify them later on. All right. So, you guys ready? We'll do this one more time. Awesome, let's do it. I have a question. Yeah. Oh, should we do a dark one next? Yeah, yeah, let's do that then. Cool, we'll do a dark one now. So, a darker one, obviously, in order to see the environment at all, there needs to be some kind of light source. So maybe we might have some kind of moon as an example. So let's have a moon, like, rising over the swamp. All right, so we'll have a go at that. Um, go ahead now, again connect this base layer to our main panel and uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a nice dark tone for our landmass okay so again I'm gonna mess around with some shapes here just to figure out you know what I might want to what direction I might want to take with it so I'm thinking something more boxy possibly. Maybe we can set the uh, the viewer up here. We'll have some like lower areas down here. So we'll uh, just increase the brightness, create a bit of a platform up here. And uh, we'll have some water happening down here. Maybe. almost like an Amazonian river happening down here. Now, in terms of darkness, uh, the sky is going to be pretty dark, as will everything else be. Um, but there is going to be some kind of gradient, some kind of light there. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go ahead now. I'm going to create a light source. It's going to be like kind of like a pink bright light source. And uh, we'll have the moon kind of like rising up over here on the horizon there. Okay, kind of shining through. And uh, obviously, there's going to be quite a lot of kind of haze coming off of that moon, some fog. So I'm going to go up here, go to the airbrush, just brighten some of this area up. There'll be, there's usually a halo around the moon as well, usually. Yes. <laughs> so we'll go ahead now and uh, I'm going to select a darker tone for some of the shadows here. And uh, oh, let's 
going to begin bringing out some of these forms. So I'm thinking, we well, have like little rocks in the foreground here around the base of these cliffs. So this is going to be quite dark since it's coming in to the foreground and then it's going to lighten up as it travels into the background. So same deal just with different tones. You know cooler tones typically are really great to use for nighttime environments. Uh, if you've ever watched a movie before you know where the scene is shot of someone maybe laying in bed thinking about something uh, usually what kind of light source is being used. It's a blue light source, and for some reason it just looks like they're laying it in pure darkness, right? So uh, it's a great way to kind of go about it, creating that illusion. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just make this moon look a bit more correct. Now again I'm going to change to a darker tone and uh, begin actually drawing in some of the details here. Is it? That's not good. And uh, I'm just going to push some of the forms into these rocks here. This is supposed to be a swamp, so uh, well, it's more of a swamp that is surrounded by rock material. So I think maybe um, it'll be cool to have the trees kind of beginning to grow up on the bank there. So I have these little islands down the bottom here. And this is in the foreground, so it's going to be a darker tone. You can see how automatically that's just brought forward straight away. The uh, red sky is not quite doing it for me, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually just going to switch it up to a blue, a dark navy grey blue. I'm just going to place that in there like so. And uh, make sure that we darken it up a little bit near the top. Take down the brightness. Add in some darker shadows, and uh, again, like obviously, this doesn't look quite like water. It just looks like more landmass. So, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's looking more like water by uh, basically just enhancing the color a little bit. Again, what color is water normally? Same color as the sky, exactly. So uh, it's gonna be that color. <laughs> so he's gonna place that in there. Alright, 
Um, and of course, yeah, this moon area is pretty like bright, so there's going to be some reflection happening on the water. Uh, it's going to die off slowly. Awesome. So now finally uh, what we'll do is add in some fog or some, uh, actually let's add in some shadows. So we'll go ahead here, go to multiply and uh, go back to our airbrush. Yep. Sorry? Let's say you're in the desert. Where there wouldn't be that much shadow on the road. Have you got a reference? Where's your reference, Troy? Something in the road. There you go. You need to get your reference out. Let's go ahead, get it out. Again, I don't read National Geographic all day every day, Troy. If it were me, I'd just look at some reference material. All right, so let's go ahead now, select a color for this moon. I'm gonna go for maybe something more red like this. It's gonna be. And, uh, I do like how your assumption is that National Geographic articles uh, relate yeah. to desert <laughs> shadows and also submerged rocks and, and erosion. <laughs> Yep, yep, totally. <laughs> uh, by the way, I actually do need some uh, some plantation in here because it's looking a little bit too uh, barren at the moment. Um, so let's go ahead now and place in some trees and, and stuff. Um, basically, remember I was going to have these little banks down here, so I'm going to go ahead and place those in. Um, again, going back to my chalk brush, I've kind of got a bit of a fondness for it now. So uh, what I can do now is uh, simply, I'm going to place this in a new layer because I don't want to mess things up too much. And uh, Okay, there's going to be some shrubbery down here. It's almost, it's sorry. Now, of course, I'm adding in some highlights here against the rocks as well. Go ahead and add in these trees. It's going to be some other trees down here as well. We can have some of these trees actually beginning to grow in the water as well, on top of it, like so. And of course, we got these branches. So these are pretty clear in terms of telling us what's going on, and you can imagine like. 
you know, if we were to spend like four hours on one of these, exactly what we could come up with, some pretty amazing results. So what I'd like you guys to do for homework in the coming week, sit down, lay out some six of these panels here, or continue with the ones that you're working on, and begin concepting up some draft ideas for your three finalized designs. So again, we're doing how many of these draft, preliminary drafts? Six. Six. And how many final designs are we going to do for the hand-in? Nice. Three. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah. And uh, again, like this last one, again, set in the swamp, but completely different feeling, you know, to this first one isn't it? And it really looks massive as well because we set the camera a fair way back. So I uh, quite like the way this one came out actually. Um, but let's see if we can push it a bit more by placing in some final overlays and adjustments. So maybe like in the game, this is where the frogs would dwell down here on the banks. So we'll go ahead now, layer new adjustment layer, change up the curves a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's how you would do a nighttime environment. You know, again, just using darker tones. See, like we can really push this out now. Create a new layer on top of that one. Layer, new adjustment layer. color balance and just play around with some of the colors here again looking for those blue tones to really give it that nighttime appearance okay And uh, if I wanted to go back and define that moon a bit more, I could do that, which I think I will do. Now for your final environments, they'll start off very similar to this. So just keep that in mind that um, if you can get some of the practice out of the way and do the homework this week, uh, that'll be preparing you for the final version. All right, so that's the, uh, again, like, if you want, you can always go back in here and add in some highlights, too, just to really, sorry, yeah, cool, again, think about the environment and the mood you want to convey, Troy. There we have it. So, which ones are your favorites? Definitely last one. Last yeah. one? Yeah. Kind of thing. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty different. Very yeah. Yeah, I kind of dig these too. I think they're the most interesting ones. Yeah, it's cool, huh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So again, remember those uh, sh shadow overlays and the o highlight overlays. They're going to add a lot to the paintings as well. Okay. But practice, 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 guys. When I set you homework, I expect you to do it. So do not come to class next week without those six finished drafts. All right. There should be no excuses. I've gone ahead and I've literally, I've recorded all of this. So it'll be up on YouTube for you. And... You know, again, you don't have to just stick to that six. Like, if you want to do 20 of these, just to give yourself a bit of an edge, then uh, go ahead and do that, you know? I mean, you're going to get out what you put into it. So, I don't expect you to be amazing just yet, but do what it is that you need to do to begin getting there. All right. Anyway, let's uh, wrap it up for today, and uh, I'll catch you guys next week.